Recently, Apo Maker found themselves in hot water, with them rebranding keyboards and warranties not being claimed. Let's just say 2022 wasn't exactly their year, but it seems like they're trying to fix their problems one by one. Today, we'll be reviewing this Apo Maker EK68. Yet another rebrand, but does it stand price-wise head-to-head with his barebone cousin? Let's find out. I have to disclaim that Ipo Maker did send this out for review, but that will not affect any opinions I have on this board. Inside this blue box contains the board itself, wrapped in plastic. Next to that is the accessories, which include the manual, some extra keycaps to change the theme of the board, a braided USB Type-C cable, and some extra flamingo switches in case any switches were damaged. Lastly is the board itself, neatly wrapped in the plastic I mentioned earlier. It sports a black and yellow theme keycaps encased in a CNC aluminum looking body, but it's actually plastic. The Apo Maker EK68 is a 65% mechanical keyboard with a knob on the top right. You can almost think of it as a budget version of the Zoom 65 with a plastic chassis, tri mode connection, and with pre installed keycaps and switches out of the box. Much like the TH80, the EK68 is a rebrand of another keyboard. It's also known as the GMK67 Bare Bones. What Epo Maker did is that they added in their own switches and keycaps for the price of 90 on their store. My unit came with the Epo Maker Plumbingo switches and OEM height double shot PBT keycaps. As I mentioned earlier, it adopts the same layout seen on the Zoom 65, a blockered 65% layout with a knob on the top right. You could notice on the blocker the board as an indicator for the battery, which lights red when it's charging and lights green when it's fully charged. On top is a mode indicator to know if it's wired or wireless. Speaking of which, on the rear we see the recess USB port, alongside the Windows and Mac toggle, tri mode switch for Bluetooth and 2.4 GHz, as well as a spot for the dongle. On the side we see a clean and unique side profile which incorporates a two piece design. The front height is about 18mm and it extends to about 27mm and this can be elevated with a built-in two-stage rubber feet which are sturdy enough to withstand drag from typing. The back is clean of any design just incorporating the badge as well as the rubber feet on the sides. A standout feature of this board is that it kind of looks like a CNC aluminum board but in fact it's fully made out of plastic. Weighing only about 0.8 kilograms, you come to think that this board would feel cheap but I didn't hear any creaking in my end. Not bad at all considering its construction. The only complaint I have is that the spot where the indicator is glossy as opposed to matte. Other than that, the board is alright. The switches that come with this board are some Ipo Maker Flamingos and if you want a full review of this, my buddy RX-03 has a great review on it. But to sum it up, they are great pre switches that produces a clacky sound profile and paired up with this board can make it sound great out of the box. More on that on the sound test. On the other hand, the included keycaps are just alright. They're double shot PBT, which makes it a lot better than gaming pre-builds. But the legends are just fine for what they are. The keycaps are also thin, measuring about 1.2mm. An aid for the clacky sound profile, but I'd rather have thicker ones any day of the week. The PCB is thankfully south facing, which allows you to mount your cherry propel keycaps without any interference. If you're unaware, cherry keycaps interfere with the north facing PCB. I've got a deep dive and a solution for this linked above, but rest assured that this board doesn't suffer from that issue at all. The plate in which the switches and stabs are mounted are made up steel, and with the included switches, this board produces a clacky sound profile. Speaking of plates, the included plate mount stabs are alright. They're pre lubed out of the factory, but sadly, all of them tick or rattle a bunch. I'll slightly mod this a bit later on, but if you're planning to buy this keyboard for its pre built tincture, just make sure to lube the stabs to avoid ticking. Moving on from the plates, this board sports a gasket mount design with just a little amount of flex. The plate isn't contributing on that. But on the flip side, this board doesn't exhibit any hollowness or pinging from the said plate, thanks large in part due to the case and plate foam pre-installed. 
It also seems to have a PE-foam like material, cushioning the PCB and switch. Hopefully next time, they'd offer this with an FR4 or PC plate to be able to aid out the flex. But anyways, here it is stock with the Ipomaker Flamingo switches and the stock OEM Propa keycaps. I've also modded this with a little bit of tape mod, noob stabs, as well as some EPBT keycaps. And a note on the modding process is that it's quite hard to open. The plate got scratches while I was disassembling. So rest assured that modability isn't the first thing that this board prioritizes. So without further ado, let's get started. As you notice, with some tape mod and stab lubing, the board sounds alright for the most part. This board features NKRO, and with my experience with 2.4 and Bluetooth, I haven't dropped any keys or lagged out of typing. And at the time of testing this, during the Christmas season, I haven't charged the battery at all, which shows the longevity of the 3000mAh battery, even with the RGB on. For the price of 90 US, you couldn't go wrong with this keyboard. It offers a nice layout with a knob if you're into that, switches that are great even stock, and some alright keycaps. Though the same can be said with the GMK67 bare bones, because for the price of 50 US, you could get the same thing with your choice of keycaps and switches. I wish that Ipo Maker changed the plate material to be PC or FR4 to be able to aid out the flex. But I guess that the steel plate adds more weight to the board, and that could come up as a premium feeling. I also wish that Apple Maker could be able to lube the stabs better to remove the ticking out of the box, as this is a pre-built and the majority of the buyers wouldn't even mod this for years to come. But I like the fake anodization, I like the indicator implementation, and I overall like the typing feel of the switches, plate, and keycaps combined. If you're looking for a one-and-done deal for a mechanical keyboard, this is alright. But if you want to customize your board on your own, you can look elsewhere, maybe like the GMK67. For now, let me know what other boards compete with this price range. Do you think this is worth it? I'm John J. Binaba, and I'll see you in the next video.